We live. Sup, everyone. <clears throat> Thanks for jumping on. What's today? Wednesday? Happy Wednesday. So let me know, guys. Hope this stream goes okay. It's crazy windy here today. Across the street, we had a massive tree go down right on the power lines. Our power's out right now, so I apologize if the lighting's dim. There's no lights. There's no Wi-Fi. So just doing this on data, <clears throat> excuse me, hopefully it goes off without a hitch, but if not, you guys know me. I'll, I'll make it up to you. What's up? Set the reminder on. I hope I can get better reception in 30 minutes. All right. Hey, you don't have to tell me about reception. Got a power outage. Good evening, Andy from Sweden. What's up? What's up, Daniel? Thanks for jumping on. All right, y'all. So before we get into the questions, I know I've been going back and forth with this. Big announcement. I am starting a Patreon account. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a subscription-based service where I'm going to be selling dog training videos. So patreon.com slash Andy Kruger. It's going to start March 1st. Okay. So the next couple weeks, I'm still fine tuning. I'm getting some content shot, but that Patreon is going to be up and ready to rock and roll starting March 1st. The way it works is there's different tiers. So I'm going to have three tiers. And each of those is going to have a different value, a different cost per month. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot step-by-step -step instructional videos for obedience, tug work, bite work, even decoy instructionals. You'll have the opportunity to do monthly uh, interactive video lessons with me. So depending on what tier you're in, those are the benefits you're going to get. But I can promise you no matter what, it's going to be new content weekly for sure. It's going to be hours of new content every single month. I would never post this stuff anywhere else. It's all of my methods, my techniques. I ain't giving it out for free so Johnny Dog Trainer down the street can watch it, copy off me, and then sell it. So that's what the Patreon's for. I'm really excited about it. If you guys like the videos I post on YouTube, oh my God, I'll give that away for free. You, you ain't seen nothing yet. These videos are going to be legit on the Patreon. So it's really exclusive access to videos that no one else will have access to. Exclusive access to communicate with me, send me videos, what's going on with your dog. I can help coach you. Uh, and a ton of other stuff I'm going to post on there. So patreon.com slash Andy Kruger. Don't worry, don't worry. I will blast it out when it's officially ready. It's going to be right before March 1st. I'm going to blast it. I'm going to shout it from the rooftops. You guys won't be able to miss it. Again, new weekly content that I'm not going to post anywhere else except the Patreon. So you guys are going to love it. That was the announcement. More to come on that. Minneapolis, all right, what's up? Do I have any experience with giant schnauzers? Yeah, a little bit. I do have a little bit of experience with giant schnauzers. How's it going? Pretty good. Andy, would you compete in APPDA? You know, I would not compete in APPDA. Um, but I actually know the gentleman, Ty Nero, who I, I believe started it. Um, and he's always been a very cool and, and great guy to me. So shout out Ty Nero. What's up, man? Uh, but no, I wouldn't compete in it. I'm a ring sport kind of guy. You know, you'll see me doing French ring and then maybe, you know, a little bit of Mondial ring. But that's pretty much how I roll. Hello from Germany. Love it. What's up, Matthias? Hello from Lebanon. Heck yeah. What's up? Thank you. Hello from Virginia. Chris, what's up? I hope you're training. 
Good morning from Daly City, California. Good morning, Shirley. I hope you trained this morning. Andy's back, baby. You got that right, Caleb. You keeping that Rottweiler in line? You better be keeping that Rottweiler in line, Caleb, okay? Every single morning you wake up, I want the first thing you do, putting the training equipment on that boy and exercising control all the way to the door when you go potty. First thing, I better be seeing that. What's up? Where's the podcast, bro? Great question, Chris. I actually meant to mention that. I'm going to have a new podcast that's going to be dropping on the Patreon. So don't get mad at me. Oh, Andy, we got to pay for it. I'm going to have a podcast on the Patreon. It's going to be two times per month. So every other week, it'll be video. It'll be audio. I'm going to get started like that. Not that I'm not going to have an official podcast that's out there on all the platforms that you can get for free. But I'm going to start it on that Patreon, and it's going to be super, super cool. So it's coming. Hi from Croatia. What's up? What's up? Hey, Andy, any advice for developing bite work for a mal? What age do you start? All right. What's up, Neil? Good question. Yeah, so I don't know if it's the same the same person, but developing bite work for a Malinois, and I got a question earlier this morning, what age do I start developing the grip? So I think I can tackle both those at once. You start developing the grip, I mean, from day one, when you get an eight, 10-week-old puppy from the breeder, you get you a nice little flirt pole. Um, even a little rag in your hand can do the trick. And you start playing a little bit of prey with the dog. They start biting on the rag. Maybe you lift them up a little bit on the rag. Uh, now, a lot of trainers that I know, they don't like to do any bite work during teething. Um, and, you know, some trainers even swear by never doing any bite work during teething. I did bite work with my dogs a couple times during teething, um, but it was more so because I had the opportunity to train with someone really great that was in town and I didn't want to pass it up. But usually I will shelf the dog during teething and I, and I won't do any bite work, but you start building the, the grip and the drive from day one on your flirt pole and then once the dog is done, not only done teething, but all those teeth are in, in, and set in in so like when the teeth are in I'd maybe give them another month or two and then you can start building up that grip on various pieces of training equipment um, you know every trainer likes different toys to do this some like a big leather wedge some like a little thin leather strap and pretty much everything in between so you build up the dog's grip slowly but surely uh, and I mean slowly in that first year. And, you know, if you do a good job, then by the time that they're one and beyond, you know, it's a little bit off to the races with the grip. But I like that. I like back pressure. I like putting dogs on bungees. I like keeping the sessions a little shorter rather than quite long. All right. Sorry about the scrolling. Good afternoon from South Florida. Afternoon, Trey. What's up? Uh-huh. Good, good. Nice, Caleb. Here's Austin. In your experience, how is the temperament of a giant schnauzer compared to other working line dogs? Um, I mean, a giant schnauzer isn't my dog, meaning it's not my breed. I'm not sure I would... I would own one and train one. Um, if I had to compare them, I wouldn't compare them to a Malinois or a German Shepherd. Um, I feel like they're a little more doberman -y than than anything. I don't know, maybe, maybe some people will agree. Maybe some will be disgusted at that. But I think a giant Schnauzer's, it, it's more, more similar to a Doberman, at least when it comes to working and bite work. Temperament, though, I mean, not bad. Pretty average. Hey, Andy, what's the best time for obedience training? My recent one-year-old Malinois girl after cardio exercise or before cardio exercise. Hello from Spain. What's up, Rico? 
The best time for obedience training with a one-year-old, he's asking, before or after cardio exercise? Before. Before cardio exercise. It just depends what you want to achieve. So I like, think about this, Rico from Spain. Cardio is going to release a lot of endorphins with the dog. <laughs> If they're getting cardio, they're probably running quite a bit. They're swimming. They're laboring a lot. Okay, so there's explosion. There's fast moving. There's grabbing toys. There's running. There's tugging. All that kind of stuff. So I like to do a bunch of slow, boring, easy obedience before a cardio workout. So that way my dog doesn't get in the habit of exiting the crate and then needing this big blowout of energy he's used to getting. I like we come out, he's jacked with energy, but he's got to bring it all the way down. He's got to be very calm, relaxed in his obedience. Could be five minutes, could be 20 minutes, could be 30 minutes. And then I can do a big running around the property with a toy cardio kind of exercise. Now, if you're planning on competing with your dog, you would probably want to throw in a little obedience after that cardio exercise because if the dog's competing on the field, halfway through, they're going to be... <sighs> so they have to learn how to continue to think and work through exhaustion and mental exhaustion. So long answer short, I do a little bit before and a little bit after. All right, let's see what we got here. You're welcome. You're welcome for the advice. God, can I scroll without screwing up the screen? Jeez, all pates. Cannot wait for your Patreon. Thanks, Daniel. Watch a lot of dog trainers on YouTube and your free videos are the best by far. I have so big hopes on the Patreon. I'm telling you what, guys, these other dog trainers, it's not even fair to me, okay? Easy work. The YouTube stuff, I'm glad you love it. I love it too. I really enjoy thinking of ideas of what to make, making it, editing the videos, putting them up. I do everything because I'm a control freak. So I do everything. I really enjoy it. But I'm telling you guys, the YouTube videos, are they're cake. They're easy. I will give all of that out for free. That stuff's easy. The Patreon, it's more, I don't want to say like a realistic glimpse into my training with the dogs because the YouTube stuff's realistic, but it's going to be a lot more like point and shoot and go. Less produced. I mean, it'll have great you know, video quality and value, but less produced. It's going to be more of like, all right, hit the camera. I'm going to pull out Freddie. Let's see what we can do. So it's going to be a lot more in-depth, step-by-step. You get to see the start, middle, finish. Um, so it's going to be a lot more detailed than the YouTube. And I'm going to give away a lot more secrets. Let's see what we got here. What's up? You're welcome. Looking forward to the Patreon. Thank you, my brother. I'm stupid psyched to, to get that content up. I've already started filming a bunch of it, and it's good. Look, not only on the and I know this sounds like a big a big pitch, but I'm just I'm excited about it. On that Patreon, it's gonna be cool, like step by step training, but it's not gonna be me just standing there lecturing for an hour. It's not going to be, okay, now when we're training, sit. Uh, now here's your reward marker. It's not going to be step-by-step -step boring stuff that you can find anyone regurgitating anywhere. It's going to be unique stuff, but still focusing on the basics. I guarantee you... If you watch my YouTube channel, you're going to become a better dog trainer, better handler, a better owner, guaranteed. My Patreon, that's if you're a real one. 
That's if you're willing to pay a couple bucks every month to get stuff that's even better. If you subscribe to my Patreon, I will not rest until you have leveled up. It's going to be impossible for you not to get better on that Patreon, unless you just take everything that I say and do the exact opposite. Then you're in trouble. But I'm telling you what, guys, I've never, never shown stuff like this, never done videos like this, and I'm going to do it every week, every month, every year. I can promise you that. So you can imagine how quick the content's going to add up if there's a couple new videos weekly. Hours, hours of new content every month, but quality content. Again, I'm not going to say, oh, here's a new hour of content, and it's me just standing in front of a camera talking about aggression for an hour. It's going to be good. All right, all right. I hope you guys, before you've been pulling out your dog to train, I hope you got a plan. Hope you got a pen and paper. I hope you've been writing down what you're doing. Andy, you don't seem to have a very high opinion of Dobermans as far as working or protection dogs. Reason? Ah, uh, good question, Macho. No, um, I mean, I'm sorry if it comes off that way. It's not that I don't like Dobermans. I, I mean, I, I like them just fine. It's just not my kind of dog. You know what I mean? It, it, I just, I don't, I feel that, look, there's some Dobermans that can do like amazing stuff. They can definitely do protection. They can definitely do various dog sports, IGP for sure. They can make great companions. They can make great deterrent dogs. I mean, almost, I'm sure they can be service dogs. I'm sure they can do everything. But I like the Belgian Malinois. They're a little more, if that makes any sense. Excuse me. Sometimes I feel like the Doberman can be, a, like when they're young, one, two, even a little older, they can be a little, I don't want to say ditzy, but they're a little more like carefree than maybe like a Belgian Malinois. You know, I don't want to use the word intensity because I don't, I don't think that's the exact right word, but um, the workability of a Doberman, I'm just, I'm a Malinois guy. I mean, that's, that's really all it is. But I had a ton of clients that have had Dobermans. I had a Doberman in my, my ring sport club one time. I think they, they title all the way up to a level two in French ring. So nothing against them, just not just not my flavor, so to speak. Andy hates Dobermans. He loves Rottweilers more. <laughs> uh, that's not true, Caleb. I don't hate Dobermans. I don't hate Rottweilers either. I'd put them kind of in the same, you know, Doberman, Rottweiler. Both are pretty cool. In my opinion, they're kind of on the same, same level. Greetings and respect from Poland. Thanks, Gregor. What's up? Let me see here. Sorry about my finger on the screen. How can we get your biothane leads? And what's the benefit of not having a handle at the end of the lead? Good question, Chris. Um, DM me on Instagram, Andy underscore Kruger. DM me and I'll, I'll get a leash out to you. That's how I'm doing it right now until I figure something else out. The benefit to not having a handle on the end is I let my dog drag the leash around a lot, both inside and outside, and the handle can get snagged on a branch that came down on a root, especially if the leash is attached to a prong collar. I don't want the dog... Uh, getting hung up on something. So that's the reason for the no handle. And, you know, personally, I just, I never use the handle. So that's why I do it. If you want a handle on the end of the leash, it's easy for me just to put a little, um, a little rivet in there and, and make you a handle. So, you know, if you have like a six foot leash 
and you're walking your dog and you want to release them for potty, sometimes it can be handy just to hold that handle. That thin biothane, if the dog like takes off on you, might slip out of your hand, but I just don't have it. I just never use it. I don't want it to get caught on anything. Oh yeah, great questions, y'all. Love it. Love it. Still waiting for my power to come back on. Here we go. What age do you start developing grips? Mm, again, day one, I use my little flirt pole in a rag, get the dog chasing, get the dog biting, get them biting hard, and then after teething, you know, then I start doing some grip work. So, you know, call it, call it eight months old to be safe. A little before teething, then eight months old. Here we go. Argentina! What's up? Okay, here we go. How do you get enough money to be able to support your lifestyle with your dogs? Is it all money from YouTube and boarding trains or do you do another job? Sorry if this is a pushy question. No, not at all. I make my money from uh, boarding trains and one-on-one -on -one lessons training dogs. I have for the last 13 years. Money from YouTube, I make, I make a couple bucks here and there, but I don't really care about money on YouTube. I care more about building, um, building a platform, I guess is the word I'm looking for, and having just like a big club is how I think about it online. I think I have 12,000 subscribers. I'd like 120,000. I'd, I'd like 2 million. Um, and not even really for the money. I, I make all my money boarding and training pet dogs. Bingo. That's where I make it. Um, but now talking about the Patreon, I do want the opportunity to make real training videos, in-depth videos where you can really see everything that I'm doing. Um, but I make all my money on pet dogs. Holler at your boy. Poland, what's up? Do you ever reward after a verbal correction or positive punishment at the beginning of teaching new behaviors? No. No, I never reward right after a correction or a punishment. The dog doesn't have to feel happy all the time. If they feel a little, uh, for a few minutes, let them feel that way. They don't have to feel good all the time. Hit that like button. Thanks, Rachel. Hello from Texas. What's up? Here we go, Andy. How do I start the process of becoming a decoy? Is it normal to title your dog first? Um, I wouldn't say it's normal to title the dog first. How you start becoming a detour, detour, a decoy is you have to find a mentor you have to join a club. You have to be somebody's slave in the kennel. You have to clean up poop for years in the hopes they'll teach you something. But you got to find a mentor that's willing to work with you. And that can be hard. That's one thing I want to do with the Patreon too. Video lessons of the basic, basic mechanics in a bite suit and then all the way up from there. It doesn't exist anywhere else online that I think is good. You always have to be in person and find someone. So this way, all you have to do is have a qualified dog, and then watching my decoy videos, you can start testing out the techniques. That way, when you ultimately do join a club or get a mentor, you're not like a day one guy. Hey, I've never been in a suit. No, you want to show up being like, hey, I want you to teach me. I can catch dogs real basic. I know a couple things. That's going to help your chances. I got my six-month Malinois that I will compete in protection with. So I will follows, follow Freddie's training like crazy. Awesome. What protection sport are you going to compete in? Love it, Daniel. Hey, Andy, do you have a website? Yep, I sure do. KrugerK9.com. You can spell it either way. I have, I have both. My companion male is almost two, but she's very anxious during walks. How do I help with that? You have to teach her a really solid proofed heel command. That way she can feel comfortable and she knows she'll be safe 
as long as she just sticks right by you. She doesn't have to worry about anything else. you got to take the leadership role. She has to feel like she's not making any of the decisions. You'll handle everything. That'll put her at ease. Malinois are Malinois. That's true. Different. Once they bite you, it's hard to explain. <laughs> yep. Here's Chris. Do you believe in elevated food and water bowls? Does this really help dogs? I don't know. Probably. I don't do it. I just feed them on the ground. Maybe it helps. I think it's fine either way. Awesome. Thanks, Rachel. Do you have a list of reputable breeders by chance? Uh, good question, Slick Rick. Uh, I go over this a lot. I actually do not recommend breeders. I don't recommend breeders even for pet dogs. I, I really don't just because I don't. Sorry. Give the dog some time after punishment. That's right, Rachel. Um, and I mean, punishment can be something as simple as, you know, your dog, a dog goes to jump up on you and you just lift up your knee so their chest runs into your knee and not their paws are all over you. I mean, even something as simple as that can be a punishment. But yeah, Rachel's right. You want to let the dog just kind of live in that moment for a few before you start trying to praise them up again. They don't have to be happy all the time. Okay, here's a question from Caleb. Better be good. Uh, so Caleb's Rottweiler does not get off his place or climb command unless he's released and stays in the crate at night. Do you think it's needed for during the day to be in the crate? I mean, I don't know. It just depends on your dog. If your dog just hangs out in your house and never bothers anything or anyone and does absolutely nothing that you don't like, and you have your dog totally obedience trained and he places bulletproof, his heel bulletproof, his recall, you bet your life savings, he comes when called every time. If you have great training and your dog's chill, um, I don't really see a, a big reason why you couldn't just leave him in the house. I mean, he is a companion dog after all. It's not like you're trying to win the French ring championship with him. So if he's cool in the house and his training's good and he listens, have at it, man. That's personal preference right there. Here we go. What's a good starter home protection dog for a person that has never had a protection dog before? Something that's good with the family and other dogs, but is also a great protector. Good question, Sid. I'd recommend a German Shepherd for a first time. You know, you can call it a protection dog. You can call it a deterrent dog. Sometimes I like the phrasing deterrent dog a little bit better than protection dog um, for several reasons. But yeah, I think a nice... Um, handsome, decent-sized German Shepherd is a pretty good starter dog. A Belgian Malinois is a terrible starter dog. You don't want to start with one of those. Um, also, the Doberman and Rottweiler, you know, if the Malinois is here, as far as difficulty and intensity, you know, your German Shepherd's here, your Doberman's Rottweiler, you know, that's kind of here. So I'd recommend one of those breeds. I mean, the German Shepherd's classic, though, you know, as far as just... You know, think about a big, handsome shepherd looking out your front window, barking at someone. I mean, that's a pretty legit presence there. You know, it's just a classic German shepherd. I mean, you don't have to know dogs to see a German shepherd and be like, oh, crap, is that a police dog? You know what I mean? Compete in Mondial Ring. Love it. Nice. Nice, Daniel. Mondial Ring's awesome. Hi, sir. Hey. How can I speed up the execution of commands like sit, place, heel with my lab? Prong and e-collar are not allowed in Germany. Good question, Matthias. Well, you definitely, you know, you don't need a prong and e-collar 
to speed things up. It can be one method, but you can just use a leash and flat collar the exact same way. And in fact, before I use a prong or an e collar to speed things up, I just use a flat collar instead. It's called negative reinforcement. Negative not meaning it's bad. Negative meaning we're taking something away. We take the pressure away when the dog performs the behavior. Reinforcement, they're more likely to do it again. So you can just use a regular flat collar, but really what's going to help you out to make your dog do things fast is an explosive release command. So the word yes or a click on a clicker. So you have your food, you have a piece of chicken, the dog's foaming at the mouth, they want it really bad. You take them, you go sit, the second they put their butt on the ground, yes, and they explode out of the position. So don't worry about duration when you're developing speed. The worst thing you could do with speed is start making the dog stay and wait and be patient. No, 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 you want sit, bam, yes, down, boom, yes, heel, boom, yes. Release, 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 explosion, explosion, explosion. That's how you get the speed, my friend. Then if you want to pair it with a little flat collar action, you can definitely do that. Lots of questions. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, check out the website. The website is uh, more for my pet dog business. So if you're a local in town, you go to my website, you can read about the board and train, you can email me, then you can sign up. So it's more just for like a pet board and train on the website. All my good stuff is YouTube, it's Instagram, and then my Patreon. That's going to be, you know, if you really want to see some stuff, that'll be the way to go. Should I buy my first suit if I've never been in one? I have a great mentor slash club, just never brought up decoying before. Uh, we'll bring up decoying. Say you want to get in a suit. Um, you can buy a suit. Look, it's, it's nice to show up with your own suit. I decoyed for years before I could even afford a suit. I was in the suit for probably three years before I, I had my own. So, yeah, look, sometimes it's a pain in the butt for someone to have to share with you. They might be sweating like a pig in it, the dog before, then they take it off and give it to you. I've been there before. Um, so I wouldn't say you need a suit. Look, you could also just offer to throw on a sleeve and start working dogs on a sleeve. That's usually a better place to start than all out in the suit. Just get comfortable with the sleeve work. Um, but yes and no. If you want to go buy a suit, that's a bonus. Good for you. If you don't, you can make it work. Oh yeah. Hello, should my nine month old German Shepherd slash Husky still be play nipping? Absolutely not. Have you checked out Shield Canine since your last vid? I have not. No, I have not checked them out. I have a Dutch Shepherd, check them out. I had a Dutch Shepherd too. I'm very familiar. If anyone needs GSD puppies, I know a guy. Nope, Caleb. No one, no one needs one of those. No show line backyard puppies, please. Anyone breaking into your house is probably just going to shoot your dog if they are determined enough to make it at that point. Jesus, take it easy, man. <laughs> take it easy. Dogs are good for alerting in a protection sense. <laughs> well, that's pretty pretty extreme, but I mean, I do, I mean, I don't know about the shooting thing, but yeah, look, if I have like the baddest protection dog in the world, you know what that means? Probably means I have a ton of time and a ton of myself invested in that dog. Unless I'm willing to like almost sacrifice that dog to save my life, I don't want my dog biting anyone. I really don't. I don't want my dogs biting anyone so this gentleman um, is right the dog should be like a, an alarm system security system they hear something weird they sense something weird they go ballistic and then that gives you the heads up to you know get your own protection and check out the situation but yeah, it, it can be kind of fairy tale land having a protection dog like oh someone comes in the house he's gonna bite them like 
maybe if they're just a sitting duck, but someone that wimpy probably doesn't have the audacity to just walk into your house. So it's probably going to be someone who's willing to really fight a dog. They could easily pull out a knife, a weapon. Um, they could just shove their hand in your dog's eye. Like seriously, unless my life or my family's life is at imminent risk, I don't want my dog going near anyone. It's too much too much time and effort I put into them. I don't want to just have them get jacked. Okay, here's David. My Belgian Malinois comes today, excited yet scared. Well, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Have fun. Puppies are fun. You'll never be satisfied. Just remember that. Took my nine-month-old Mal out of his pen in the garage, had the prong with leash on, and we start towards the door. I looked down and he started to mark my shop back. <laughs> what would your response to that be? Okay, so we, we go to take the dog out on a leash and collar and we look down and the dog's peeing on the shop back. Um, look, he's what, he's nine months old? Nine months old, look, good thing you had him on a leash and collar. I would have like calmly and just not mad, not yelling, I would have been like, no, no, no. And not jacked him on the leash, but no, 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 no. Come on, hey, 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 no, 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 no. Just create like a little sense of urgency. What, what, oh, sorry. But definitely don't punish that nine month old. Don't be like, no, no, that's way over. Look, it's a little puppy, he lifts his leg on the shop vac. It's a shop vac, you can wipe that thing off or not. Spray with the hose. But I wouldn't go too hard on him. I would just be like, hey, 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 no. And then you got to log that for next time. So next time you take him out and you're walking there, grab some food, shove it in his face, distract him, pay him for the obedience, and then take him outside. So don't hammer that dog. It's just a puppy. My GSD is scared outside, always attentive, thinking something will jump out. She listens when I give commands, but is always looking around. This builds up, and when she sees a dog and people, she goes crazy. Well, I hate to say this, but, I mean, working with a local professional dog trainer is always a great idea. Um, your dog needs good obedience, which is going to lead to good confidence. Yeah, look, for new decoys, start on a sleeve. Don't start training on young dogs either. That's a great point. I can't quite read the name. But yeah, good point. Don't, don't be in front of young dogs. You need older, like almost like retired dogs that you can just play around with. How would you order five dog breeds for the French ring from one to five? Belgian Malinois, Belgian Malinois, Belgian Malinois, Belgian Malinois, Belgian Malinois. <laughs> That's what I would do. I mean, breeds for French ring, Belgian Malinois. Every once in a while, you can get a German Shepherd that can do it. Every once in a while, you might see a Doberman, uh, but Belgian Malinois. Do you know any good places to get tug toys and rolls for us Canadians? Uh, DavidLeerberg.com is a great website. Okay, here's Apex Canine. I got one for you, Andy. How would you explain the difference in behavior between animals who have had genetic predisposition versus learned a behavior? I don't understand the question. How do you explain the difference in behavior between dogs who have a genetic predisposition versus a learned, oh, a learned bad behavior? 
How would I explain the difference? Um, I, I don't know exactly. I don't, I don't quite understand that. I think I would say that some dogs can for sure have genetic aggression. 1,000%. Okay? So with that dog, there's only so many situations they're going to be able to put in. There's only so far they'll be able to thrive as far as socially. And you can't train or teach a genetic aggressive, genetically aggressive dog to be lassie. You just can't do it. You have to know the limitations of the dog and you have to work within those. Now, if you compare that to a dog who is not genetically aggressive, but has learned aggressive behaviors as a way of controlling a situation that maybe freaks them out. Um, for example, you're walking your dog down the street, he sees another dog or a stranger and starts uh, 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 hackling, backing up, barking at him. You know, that's, uh, and we're, we're saying that that's not genetic. It's just a puppy who wasn't socialized well and was babied and coddled. So with that kind of dog, you can kind of fix to a certain extent those kind of aggressive behaviors because it's something that the puppy learned to do that he thinks affects the situation. So you, through good obedience training and a good relationship and lifestyle, you can, you can kind of turn those dogs into just being way more social. I don't know if that answers the question, but I like where your head's at. Okay, here's Canem TV. All right, love your content. Thanks. Fantastic videos. Thank you. You're giving me inspiration on how to train with my German Shepherd in new ways. Watching from Poland. Love, love, love. Thank you, thank you. When did you start training dogs? How old were you? Um, like officially, professionally, 19. And you know, I don't want to be like that stereotypical dog trainer where they're like, well, I grew up with dogs, so I've been good with dogs my whole life. You haven't been training dogs your whole life. Stop it. Uh, so yeah, of course, growing up, I always had dogs. I was always trying to train them, blah, 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 etc. But actually started it like a real business with real training, 19. My boy just hiked his leg for the first time today. Five and a half months. There you go. Mark it up, little brother. Well, I should have been much calmer. Thanks for the answer. I think that was for the leg on the vacuum. Yeah, look, you live and you learn. You live and you learn. Sometimes when a, a puppy or a dog does something that, like, surprises us, we react in that way. Hey, hey, no. Hey, 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 no. So if you're surprised, it can kind of elicit like an emotional response, which, yeah, it's, it's going to be overkill, but hey, like, don't worry about that. The dog should be resilient. Pep him up next time. Use food. And if he goes to do it again, you know, no correction. Just go, hey, hey, what are you doing? Get out of there. You know what I mean? So don't worry about it. You'll be fine. What's the best way to know if the trainer in the local area is good? Great question, Jason. Well, you want to see their resume. You want to see if they've competed in dog sports. You want to see if they run a dog sport club or if they're just, uh, you know, if not, you know, not ideal. I have an 11-month-old Malinois, and she doesn't like to bite the sleeve with the trainer, but will bite anything at home. And I want to train for protection. Yeah, that's really common. Actually, the dog that you've seen in the video that I just published, and then the next few videos I'll do named Fiona. She's an 11-month-old female Malinois client dog. You can see this all the time with dogs that are a little more insecure, not as confident. They, they bite like a mofo for the owner. They'll do all kinds of stuff. But then when it comes to the trainer, they go into avoidance. And they're like, no, I'm good. And they just like pretend like they're 
don't know what's going on. They're not interested. They kind of mentally shut down. So look, to fix that, I mean, you have to majorly change your lifestyle with the dog. Dog probably have some separation anxiety. It's best to maybe try to leave the dog with the trainer for a week, two weeks, three weeks. I know it's a lot. It's an investment, time and money, but the dog's got to get off your back a little bit and go out and see the world. So, you know, a little bit of tough love for that dog. No, I, I would just stop playing with it altogether as, you know, a little experiment. And the only time they get that is with the trainer. Just some ideas off the top of my head. How do you build confidence in an American pit bull terrier? Really, really good obedience training. Oh yeah. I've had my Malinois for two months now and he's by far the smartest dog I've had. He's five months now, walks to heel, sits, lays, speaks. Best breed if you have an active life. Cool, glad you're enjoying it. Thanks for the input. Hello from Finland, what's up, what's up? Who's the goat trainer of French Ring? Me, Jack! Me! <laughs> Me! Self-belief, you gotta have it. Uh, the goat trainer in Ring, um, it depends what your, your definition of the greatest of all time is. Is it the highest scoring? Or is it the dog that looks the best? Or is it both? So, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not ready to give, give out the goat status for the French ring yet. Uh, me. How much exercise for a nine-month-old German Shepherd? Um... Nothing crazy, you know, five times a week, nine months old, five times a week, 10, 15 minutes here, 10, 15 minutes there. Quality over quantity for sure. Are pit bulls good dogs for protection training? Um, they can be, yeah. Yeah, they can be for sure. Actually, there's some pit bulls I've seen that are high flying, hard biting, even like sport dogs. So yeah, I mean, just it all depends on genetics, but yeah, pit bulls can do it for sure. Good trainers compete with their own dogs. You got that right. By the way, I got my Mala Jolly ball and she loves it. Her favorite. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. You got to have one of those with the Malinois. Definitely got to have one of those. Thank you, everyone, for all those great questions. So check it out. My next few videos are going to be of Fiona, that 11-month-old female Malinois you saw in my last video. It's my client's dog. I have her for about another week. But I've been documenting documenting our progress with tug, with out, with bringing the toy back, all things that she wasn't great at before she came in. You guys are going to love those videos, and I'm piggybacking off those. And on my Patreon, I'm going to put post up some videos of her that I would not put on YouTube that allows to see more of the step-by-step -step progression rather than the finished product. So I really think you guys are going to enjoy those videos. Hey, Andy, I have three mouths. Woo! Love my mouths and love your training videos. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. You'll love my Patreon. Not that you have to pay me. I'll keep, I keep doing the YouTube for free every Monday. And then midweek, I'll continue doing the, the Q&A on here, of course. So I'm going to keep all that, but the Patreon you'll really like. Also, guys, with the Patreon, you pay per month, but then it's all ad-free, too. So I know, you know, YouTube videos every so often, the more ads that run, the more revenue that 
I can generate. So everything that's on the Patreon is ad free. So hours and hours and hours. You don't have to sit through those annoying commercials that YouTube throws at you. Oh, power's back on. <laughs> yes, you guys see it got brighter. Yes, seriously, like an hour before I did this, I walked outside. There was like a 200 foot tall tree across the street down directly on the power lines. I was like, that can't be good. So we got power back, baby. All right, I'll do a couple more, y'all. Then I got to go train. I got to go train. Just sent one of my board and trains home yesterday. Cash, it was awesome. He's He did really well. Okay, my female Malinois mix, eight months old. She is with me since four weeks. That's qu quite early for me. Okay, I'm not quite understanding that question. I'm sorry. Opinion on getting a duchy from a shelter. No breeders near me, and I don't like the odds of getting a nervy, insecure, aggressive Dutch Shepherd. Uh, getting a dog from a shelter, no matter what, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a, of a coin toss, a little bit of a gamble. Um, you certainly keep your eye out. You know, nothing wrong with going to a shelter, evaluating some dogs there and being like, no, nah, I don't like any of these. Maybe you find one, you're like, hey, this might work, but I got a backup plan in case it doesn't. So nothing wrong with, you know, just keeping an eye out and every couple months just making a pass scouting out if there's any anything good there but I mean from a shelter could be cool but again you know they could have a checkered pass they could have big problems that you didn't create and you maybe can't fix so they're usually more of a project dog but sometimes you can absolutely win the lottery and go to a shelter and just find like a phenomenal dog that somehow ended up there so you know depends Andy, good morning from France. I follow you and love your job. What's up from the USA? I love France. Been there a couple times. Want to go back. Can't wait for the Fiona vids, right? She's crushing it. How long do you recommend to train with a dog? 10 to 15 minutes? Well, yeah, it depends on the dog's age. But if you had to ballpark 10 to 20 minutes, three, six times a day, three, two, six times a day, nothing wrong with that. You think walking fearful dogs is necessary or better off just working in their world, such as their home and yard where they feel comfortable? Good question, Thomas. Is it worth it? If the dog's nervous out on a walk, yes and no. So yeah, you don't want to just continually torture the dog, but it depends how old the dog is. If you have like a five-year-old dog who's just nervous as all get out to go for a walk and you've tried a ton of stuff, yeah, maybe just don't subject him to that anymore. And if you, you know, hopefully have a fenced in yard, just let him hang out in the yard and, and just be fine. But if you have a new puppy or a younger dog, it's probably worth teeny, teeny, tiny bits at a time taking them outside and trying to build a little bit of confidence. But yeah, it's always tricky with a, a dog that's fearful. It's like, do we focus on this? Do we work on it? Or do we just kind of, kind of shelf it? It just depends. One time, I had a board and train. It was a Wheaton Terrier. This is probably like eight years ago. I had a board and train. It was a Wheaton Terrier. It was like five, six years old. It was freaking petrified of the vacuum. Petrified. So I came in for a board and train. I trained him. The owner mentioned the vacuum thing. I took a look at it in one session and I went, no. Hey, when you need to vacuum the house, Go put him upstairs in his crate. Like, no, we're just not doing it. Because it, it, it was just, it's just going to make it worse. It can be like picking at a scab. So it does depend on the age. It depends on the trainer. You really have to be a master at reading dogs to put a dog in an uncomfortable situation and work them through it. Cool, cool.
Uh, Eight-month-old Malinois, good in the house, very distracted outside. Only work outside. You need that puppy hungry, hungry, hungry. Go outside. Just hand feed two minutes. Yes, 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 yes. Take it inside, put it in the crate. Hour later, bring it outside on a leash, potty it, and then it's hungry. Oh, she's got food. Yes, 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 yes. One minute, two minutes. Yes, yes. Forget about sit, forget about stay, forget about extended focus, forget about healing. Just engagement. Look at me. Yes. Look at me. Yes. Look at me. Yes. Build it up from there. A few minutes, three times a day. It's the only way the dog eats. Holler at me in three months. And that, if you do it right, will be a thing of the past. You're welcome. All right, y'all. It was another fun one. I appreciate everyone jumping on. Can a top-notch sport dog make a good pet or not really? They can. It depends on your definition of pet, but that all depends on the handler. But they can. Depends on your definition, though. I mean, Jasper's a top-level French ring dog, and I mean, he's an okay pet. He'd be a disaster in the wrong hands. Um, he's an okay pet, but, I mean, he's no lab. How do you get speed when luring? Never lured my dog as a puppy. High value, soft reward. Hot dog, piece of chicken, and the puppy's nibbling tiny little bits from your hand. Nibble, nibble, nibble. You can't just give hard food, kibble, treats, and then they're chewing it and dropping. It has to be boom, 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 boom. So like a baked chicken, fast, little little nibbles. Booyah. Thanks, y'all. I'm going to jump off. Any questions, hit me with them. Stay tuned. I'll give you more Patreon news. Uh, still the weekly YouTube vids coming. Happy training. Go train your dog. Come on, I got my training vest on. I'm about to turn this off and pull the dog out and get after it. Let's go. See you on Monday.